This is the voice of Turkey's English language transmission broadcasting from Ankara in ID Native Band between 1230 UDC and 1545 o'clock and in the 49 meter band between 1830, 1930 UDC and 5945 kHz to Europe. The voice of Turkey is also beamed between 2030, 2130 UDC in the third one meter band on 9875 kHz to South Asia and Australia and in the 25 meter band on 116 6 o kilohertz between 1630-730 UDC to Afghanistan, Pakistan, India, Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan. You can listen to us or the Turksat 3A and 4A satellites on the internet at www.trtdinle.com through the links, radios and then the voice of Turkey. Our email address is englishdesk at tiati.net.tr Ladies and gentlemen, hello. This is Halibrahim Sarıkaya from Voice of Turkey. Today, 10th of August 2023, you are listening to the news. Turkey calls preventing heinous acts that targets Islam. Turkey's National Security Council on Wednesday called preventing the acts that target Islam under the guise of freedom of expression. The council said that stated that do not fulfill their responsibilities in preventing heinous acts that are described as hate crimes by the UN and often nearly 2 billion Muslims are asked to change their attitudes as soon as possible and fight together against attacks on sacred values, according to a statement from Turkey's Communications Directorate. Islamophobic figures or groups have repeatedly carried out Quran burnings and similar desecration attempts in the Northern Europe in recent months, drawing outrage from Muslim countries and the world. The statement came after National Security Council met under the chairmanship of President Recep Tayyip Erdogan at the presidential complex. The council also discussed in detail the cause of the Russia-Ukraine war and its possible effects on the region. All parties were called upon to sit at the negotiation table and end the war without delay. It was emphasized that returning to the Black Sea Grain Agreement would prevent possible negative effects in needy countries and contribute to food stability. On July 17, Russia suspended its participation in the deal which it signed in July 2022 along with Turkey, the UN and Ukraine to resume grain exports from Ukrainian Black Sea ports which were paused after the Russia-Ukraine war began in February last year. Moscow has complained that the Russian part of the agreement was not being implemented. Biden moves to restrict some U.S. technology investments in China. U.S. President Joe Biden signed an executive order Wednesday to curb some U.S. investments in China's technology sector. Multiple U.S. officials who briefed reporter on the directive ahead of its public release said it is narrowly tolerate the profits U.S. firms from funding investment in Chinese firms that develop advanced technologies sensitive to the national security. That includes technologies that are critical to the next generation of military invention, said one official who, like others, spoke to reporters on condition of anonymity because the order had not yet been issued. Mali suspends issuance of visas to French nationals. Mali has identifiably suspended the issues of visas to French nationals, its foreign minister said. 
Wednesday in the latest standoff between West African nation and its former colonial master. In a statement, the ministry said the move was recoverable after it learned with surprise through the press that French foreign ministry classified Mali in the red zone on the grounds of strong regional tensions. France also reportedly suspended issues, issuance of visas and closed the visa center at its embassy in Mali's capital, Bamako. In application of recuperability, the ministry suspends until further notice that issues of visas to French nationals by the diplomatic and consular service in Mali in France, the statement said. The strong regional tensions emanate from Niger, where the military ousted democratically elected President Mohamed Bazoum on July 26. The news continues on the English language broadcast of the Voice of Turkey. Ecuador presidential candidate assassinated day before elections. Ecuador presidential candidate Fernando Villavicencio was shot dead by Wednesday while leading a campaign rally in the capital, Quito. The attack took place at 6.20 p.m. as he was leaving the Anderson School. Villavicencio, who most polls put in the fourth place among the eight candidates competing to fulfill the spot to be left early by current president Guillermo Lasso, in elections on August 20, had built his campaign around the fight against corruption and organized crime. The candidate, a 59-year-old journalist, was struck by three bullets after a gunman fired at least 40 shots, wounding other people who have been taken to various health centers. In a video circulating on social media, a burst of gunfire is heard right as Villa Vicencio is getting into a car and he is later seen on the ground, ground badly wounded. The country's public prosecution office said on the Twitter that the suspect in the attack who was wounded during the exchange of gunfire with security personnel was arrested and died shortly after. The attack comes 11 days before elections in a country experiencing an unprecedented security crisis. On July 17, National Assembly candidate Ridar Sanchez was murdered in the coastal province of Esmeraldas. And days later, the mayor of Manta, Agustin Intiriago, was killed in arm attack. Villa Vicencio had criticized the role of authorities in combating organized crime and had reported threats against him. President Lasso said he was outraged and dismayed by the assassination and called an emergency security meeting. For his memory and for his struggle, I assure you that this crime will not go unpunished, he said. Nigerians express mixed feelings over country's planned military intervention in Niger. Nigerians expressed mixed feelings Wednesday over their country's plan to send troops into neighboring Niger as part of the regional force should a West African regional bloc approve military intervention. A group of soldiers calling themselves the National Council for the safeguarding of the country seized power in Niger on July 26 and detained President Mohamed Bazoum, General Abdul Rahman wow. Tichiyan, the head of the Niger's presidential guard, declared himself the new leader of the country on July 28. On July 13th, the economic community of, of West African states, shortly ECOWAS, held an emergency meeting in the Nigerian capital, Abuja, and issued a one-week ultimatum to coup leaders to reinstate Bazoum or they would use force. But coup leaders defined the ultimatum, prompting ECOWAS to call for a second meeting on Thursday in Nigeria to discuss the crisis in Niger and the way forward. And that was the news brought to you by the Voice of Turkey.